From hot spots and hidden gems to lots of local flavor, it's your guide to all things local the unscripted way. And tonight it's about the power couples behind some of our favorite neighborhood finds. You know, they say it takes two to tango, or in the case of tonight's show, two to run a business. Hello, everyone. I'm Dana Devon, and we have a full show of SoCal dynamic duos coming your way right now, starting with this pair. Hi, I'm Angela. And I'm Miriam, and we're the founders of Kalaka Mama's Cantina. Kalaka Mama's Cantina is a dream come true for Miriam and I. It's our first independent restaurant that brings an homage to Mexican culture with true authentic flavor to Anaheim. So this is our take on a Mexican Caesar salad. We call it our luchador. Yeah, I mean, this is like an insanely huge salad. It's bigger than my head. It was something that was really lacking in the area, and we've been in the Anaheim area for a very long time. We wanted a nice, fresh, good concept that somebody wouldn't feel bad eating at every single day. It's a true love and a true passion for Angela and I. We love feeding people. We come from very ethnic backgrounds. So for us, you love people, you feed them. So those are our chilaquiles. So our parents owned and operated restaurants since we were little. And so our first unofficial jobs were always in the restaurant world. I mean, I'm super blessed. My parents gave me the best gift ever and given me a sister. So she is my best friend inside and outside of work. We, I'm so blessed I get to do life with her. She makes everything fun. It also makes it a lot easier when challenges do happen because I don't have to keep my professional mouth on and I can let that guard down with her and really vocalize what needs to be said. This is all of our favorite things or things that we've seen around the end that we just wanted to try and we wanted to bring it to people and have them experience. So everything we kind of plated and did exactly with the intention that people will take pictures of their food. All of our food, we strive really hard to be all non-GMO, mostly all organic when we can, sustainably sourced. We're really ecologically, environmentally friendly. That's important for us and important on our menu. We wanted it to be real food from a real kitchen made from scratch every day. We wanted a lot of fun and authentic Mexican dishes with a really fun, different twist. Should we start with some breakfast? We have a homemade chicken chorizo, our candied Kalaka Mama's beer bacon, berry compo, potato taquitos, our uh, homemade Mexican pan dulce. Uh, banana is my favorite thing in the entire planet, so I have to dive in. Oh. Mm. Again with the churro. Oh, everybody loves a good tater tot, so we kind of had to put a little Mexican twist on it. Can't be a Mexican themed restaurant without a lote, right? One, two, three, cheers. cheers. That is really good. Uh, this <laughs> is our taco in a bag. Ooh, that looks good. What is happening here? This is our tabletop churro cart that our chef brought out. I've been churro heaven here. Our bar is amazing. It is definitely a craft style artisan bar. Oh my gosh, it tastes like a churro. This is my favorite already. So this right here is our Whip It Good. It is our kind of play on a pineapple Dole Whip. It's so appropriate for being across the street from Disney. Mm -hmm. I think this is my new favorite. Yeah. <laughs> this is so good. So this one is called the Pink Widow, and that has a blue ice huckleberry vodka with a lavender simple syrup topped with a fresh lavender spray. Mmm, that is really light. It's delicious. This right here is actually our house-made horchata. Pair it with a side of Hennessy and we make it a henchata. So All this right. one right here is called La Catrina. See, you're a pro. Am I hired? This looks like Beauty and the Beast. I love it. Is everyone yeah. watching? Is everyone watching? Okay, here we go. Ooh! Being in Anaheim has just really been a blessing to us and our family. So Getting to know the community better and being able to give back in a more authentic way that is more us has been really a dream come true. See, we told you they were dynamic. All right, time for a pair of real sneakerheads. Jasmine Simpkins found two men whose four feet led them to thousands of cool kicks. Laced is a lifestyle. It's 
pretty much the way you carry yourself, the way you look at life, the way you dress, the way you feel about yourself. Yo, what up? I'm Pooh Jetter. I'm um, JB, and we're the owners of Lace. We wanted to bring a space like this to Londell because for like 35 mile radius, there's no store like this. It started with a conversation at our buddy's barbershop in Inglewood called Platinum Cuts. I've been playing pro basketball now for 16 seasons. Uh, last eight years I've been in China. I was always coming back home, you know, with some fresh pair of kicks. He had on a pair of shoes that he probably shouldn't have had on. It was like six months early. So that turned into a conversation and we went outside and spoke for two hours, standing on the sidewalk about opening up a business. And neither one of us got a cut that night. When we got into this business, it was a, another black owned store, you know, but then they shut down. So we didn't have nobody really to ask. You know, we had to lo like learn through experience. Who primarily does all the buying for the sneakers? Uh, I do all the buying for the store. Um, I pick all the shoes. I stay up to two, three in the morning purchasing, looking through thousands and thousands of pages of product. Some of my favorites up here are the Air Max Ones. I like all of these. So I'm about to get some sneakers because I couldn't come in a sneaker store without getting laced. Oh. Usually what I do when I buy a pair is like I just like... Smell them, of course. Best smell ever. You see LACE, but the acronym is Los Angeles Creates Endless Dreams. We do a lot in the community, like with the, up, with the kids up next. You know, we sponsor all type of basketball camps. Um, we do a lot of mentorship because I tell the, one, the young ones up next, okay, basketball may get you there, but what else? Like, you gotta have a plan B. I'm from Gardena, JB from South Central. Like, we really from here and being that representative into this sneaker world, like, it means a lot, you know, and it's, as long as you continue to trust, you know, God's plan, like, you never know what's in store. Thank you, Jasmine. They say teamwork makes the dream work. And for one African-American husband and his Mexican-American wife, that dream was a line of children's books that represented their Afro-Latinx daughter. We have uh, Mexican folklore, we have uh, Asian American stories, black history books, 50 African American women that changed the world. So it's a quick snapshot of the diversity present here in our store. My name is Stephanie Moran Reed, and welcome to Miha Books. Well, there's actually two pronunciations for our bookstore. One, Spanish speakers will see it as mija, which is the colloquial word for my daughter in Spanish. It has a much deeper meaning for us because it's actually the first two initials of our daughter's first and middle name, Mireya Jamila. So another pronunciation is Mija. Who are you? <laughs> I am Mexican-American. Both my parents were born in Mexico and they now live here in the States. And my husband, he's black, his parents are from the South. So our daughter, she's beautifully uh, mixed with both of us. Miha Books is a multicultural children's bookstore that aims to highlight diverse children, diverse stories, multilingual stories. This has always been something uh, I would say we wanted to do in terms of a project that's impactful. I like this bookstore because it has a lot of different types of books and they're all fun to read. We opened our store November 1st of 2021. Our brand actually started in 2020 during the height of the pandemic. At the time, my daughter was turning one. We struggled to find these books not only in traditional retailers, but even online we struggled to find books that were representative of her, of her culture, of other people's cultures. And so we started just as a resource online, building lists for other parents and educators to find these types of books to make it easier. You can know if you have this book, Sundays with Abuelita. We do, we actually have one copy left. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we've had educators, we've had parents, 
We've had soon-to-be parents and grandparents that will come in here. Um, and I'll never forget our first customer that walked in and literally started crying uh, when she looked around and scanned our store. And she said, I've never seen so many black faces on books before. I've been uh, writing books for over 13 years. So part of our mission here is to include local authors and to highlight indie publishing houses that are creating extraordinary works um, that are just as valuable as the bestsellers. This was a huge opportunity to really uh, partner with somebody who kind of shared your vision, who already got the importance of multicultural content. Here are two of the characters from our children's book. We have uh, Afro-Latino siblings uh, called Reina and Rashad. And it's an adventure story. It's a fantasy story. Yeah, it was extremely important for us to find books with representation because we truly believe that having these conversations from day one will lead her to loving her world, loving herself, and she won't know any different if we're introducing that to her from day one. Coming up, some husbands and wives working together and killing it in the kitchen. We'll be right back. Scripted's dynamic duos. I'm Dana Devon. All right, now a nutty little story about some homemade peanut butter, a wedding, and a couple who turn spreading their love into a business. You've seen this brand everywhere. Now I'm in the kitchen cooking with the couple who created it. Spread the Love started in 2013 when Zach and I got married and we were actually looking for something to give our wedding guests. We made like 150 jars of peanut butter for our wedding guests and it was so good like that um, after our wedding we started asking for more. And it was funny because after we're done making all these peanut butters we're like good, we don't ever have to do this again. You know, like, ah, oh, finally, we're done. So we had no idea that this was gonna become a business. I'm really proud that, you know, we we brought it like internationally and it's it's literally everywhere. It's one of the best selling nut butters on Amazon. It feels really good because this is also our own money, our own blood, sweat, and tears. Um, None no. of the blood, sweat, and tears gets into the <laughs> peanut butter, by the way. What we've been doing since 2020 is that we've been giving Spread the Love Forward scholarships. That's part of what spreading the love is, is finding ways to elevate the community, finding ways to really celebrate our roots. Okay, Val, so what are we making today? We are making vegan kare kare. Vegan kare kare. Kare kare, yeah. Kare kare, okay. Very good. First step, <laughs> I can say it, yes. Yes, do you wanna do the honors? Sure. And dice some onions? Sure. <laughs> we're also gonna chop up like these green beans. We're gonna add some avocado oil, and then we're gonna add the aromatics, which are like the onions and the garlic. Mm -hmm. So let's let it heat up for a little bit. And I think this is how I learned from like my nanny and like my sisters is like, you know, smell it. If it smells cooked, then it's cooked. Yeah. So these vegetables, uh, it's eggplant. There's two eggplants in here. And there's like a sampler of mushrooms. And then we're gonna add the vegetable broth. So we're just gonna like pour it in there. This is the Naked Crunch, mm -hmm. which is the crunchy peanut butter. Mm -hmm. See how easy it pours. And that flavor profile, yeah. of the mixture of the onion and the peanuts and the bamboo shoots, ugh, I, I, yeah. I, I and already the onions, know it's gonna yeah. be so good. Yeah. So we are going to add the mushrooms and the eggplant that we roasted. All right, it's time for the taste test. Let's dig in. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm. Man, mm. this is really good and really flavorful. Oh yeah. We have two young daughters and it's really cool for them to see mommy and daddy doing this. You know, um, I think it's really important for our girls to see themselves and their mother who's doing it. You know, someone who came to this country as an immigrant, someone who has really 
put all of our talents, focus, and effort into something. And so I think I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of what we've done, and I'm especially proud of Val and what she's been doing as not just an entrepreneur, but as a mother to our daughters as well. Oh, yeah. such an amazing pair. You know, my husband and I worked together once, once, and he said he'd never do it again. All right, so much more dynamic duo love when LA Unscripted returns. to LA Unscripted's dynamic duos and a pair of peeps you have to see to believe. Okay, we always talk about hidden gems on this show. I've driven past this restaurant on West Pico for years. I've heard they have the best shrimp and grits in the city. We are gonna try it out and I am so excited. Come with me. LA is full of transplants, so I wanted a place for all my Southern people out there that have come to LA to have, you know, that feeling of somebody's auntie's or grandmother's house. One yeah. bite, and I went back to my childhood. Yes. That is delicious. My Two Cents is located in Los Angeles, mid-city area. Besides calling it a hub of love, I would say it's evolved nostalgia, uh, conscious comfort food, American food with Southern twists. We have our Famous grit fries, what? we call them grys. Being that I was French trained and never really cooked soul food as a profession, I thought of my two cents because it's like kind of my opinion. And it was my money and it was a little bit of money. So we came up with my two cents. So I got the tattoo before I thought of the restaurant, years before. How I came up with the symbol, I wanted to remind people that food is love. So one plus one is two cents love. We have catfish and greens. We have our signature shrimp and grits there. Oh my God, this looks insane. We have our gluten-free fried chicken, marinated for 48 hours in barbecue sauce. And we have our vegan oh. collard greens. Those are mixed with kale and mustard. Ooh. And I'm a Southern girl, so I like a good, okay. Oh my God. That is insanity. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh man, it almost looks like a risotto. Yeah, so I wanted to create a menu where everybody can eat together. You can bring your grandmother here that refuses to eat vegan food, mm -hmm. perhaps, and have greens. So I wanted to make a menu that was all inclusive. My strawberry, strawberry, strawberry cake is the number one seller of everything. If I don't have a strawberry, 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 some people don't even want to eat. Working with my sister is amazing. We argue, we scream. I can make this amazing food, but every time there's say an end of the party or the end of a meal, she always caps it off. So she likes to say, she's Shaq and I'm Kobe. This is the crack cake, AKA brown sugar caramel cake. That's our vegan sweet potato cake. Tough being a female black owned business. I'm up for the challenge because there's little girls out there that can look at me and say, wow, she's a boss, I can do that. Oh my God, I'm literally sopping up things with my fingers. I have found my new soul food headquarters and that's my two cents worth. Oh, <laughs> so good. What a pair, am I right? Now a couple who met in the kitchen and got fired up to open their own business. This is kind of the new California cuisine. You know, me being Japanese American, my vision of California cuisine is this. Ryla is just my first initial, my middle initial with LA behind it. You know, I was born here right in the South Bay in Torrance. Both my parents are first generation Japanese immigrants. I've been, you know, surfing the beaches here since I was little. I definitely get a lot of inspiration surfing. I think surfing, you know, the restaurant business is really crazy. So it's kind of like church for me. One, I use it to kind of just relax and get my thoughts together. Definitely heightens, you know, my passion for seafood and working with things that are from the ocean just because I love being in it so much. The Thai snapper has been grilled over Japanese charcoal. It's a coconut broth. Oh, it's so good. It's almost like green curry. I could live on this. Yeah, I could eat this every day of my life. Most of my culinary 
culinary background has been doing French food for a long time. I took a one-year sabbatical to go back to Japan and kind of get in touch with my roots a little bit, I guess. I trained at some really nice Japanese kaiseki restaurants in Kyoto, where my mom is from. Ray and I actually met in a restaurant as well. That was probably 10, 12 years ago already, 10 years ago. I grew up in Taiwan, I'm half Taiwanese. A lot of the food that we grew up eating had Japanese influences anyways. I mean, does that not, not look like just the most delicious bread you've ever seen? And, and it's milk bread, what is milk bread? So Hokkaido milk bread is a style of bread that, that, that's very, very popular in Japan. It's known for being extremely soft. This is actually a spread that my mother used to make. There's a little bit of tobiko, so which is fish roe, cream cheese, a little sour cream, a little seaweed. As chefs, I think exposing people to amazing products, being able to prepare in a way that they've never had, to make people happy through food and expose somebody to something new, brings me a lot of joy. Before we go, I'd like you to meet my new favorite dynamic duo. I got Violet, a partner in crime. This is Pepper, and they're already quite the team. They're besties. If only these two could get jobs because they're living rent-free. All right, that is all the time we have for tonight. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.